G'day guys and gal, the warriors who remained loyal to the Emperor despite their legion going traitor ended up being some of the greatest heroes in the entire Horus Heresy. Nathaniel Garo, Garviel Loken, Saul Tarvitz, Dantioc and Rylanor, just to name a few of the absolute gigachads. Their tales were tragic but inspiring, going against the will of their Primarchs to do what was right, becoming a traitor to their own legion as well as being seen as a traitor by the Imperium as well. That takes some balls, but what about if we flip the script? What about the space marines from loyalist legions that decided to go traitor? What about the guys that decided to defy their Primarchs and the Emperor to do the wrong thing? Yeah, you don't really hear much about them, as they chose the hard path into hell. They are dicks without justification, which actually makes them pretty interesting and worth the next 10 minutes or so of your life. Before we get started, one thing that Warhammer fans have in excess is beards. I've seen many a mighty beard on my visits to my local GW store, and although I do not possess a hefty one myself, I do partake in a bit of stubble. However, the whack thing about beards is that they can either make you look more tough and attractive, or they can make you look like a disgusting bum. Hence, I've partnered up with Manscaped today to make sure you fit in the first category. Manscaped have officially released their Beard Hedger Pro Kit, an all-in-one everything you need to keep your beard shaped, trimmed, and cleaned. For me, it's great as although I don't use the shampoo for it, I also refuse to go clean shaven, so the fact that I can choose between 20 beard lengths is incredible. The beard trimmer blades are also coated in titanium with a 7200 RPM motor, as well as being waterproof and rechargeable, so the quality is definitely there. So whether or not you're growing a Viking beard or just want to keep it clean, this kit is for any and all blokes. The best part is that by using my link and code MAGICAL below, you'll get 20% off and free international shipping on all Manscaped products, including the famous Lawnmower, Cloud 2.0, and other Manscaped classics. Cheers to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. Today we'll go over the space ruins from Loyalist Legions that became traitors, discussing their motives and what ended up happening to them. Uh, let's get into it. Due to the nature of how stupid it is to join Chaos when your legion is loyalist, it's no surprise that it was a pretty rare occurrence. However, in a legion of 100,000 or so warriors, 0.1% of dipshit retards still equals 100 marines. The most well-known and widespread example of traitors within a loyalist legion was the White Scars, in which close to half the legion declared for Horus and then initiated an extremely dramatic short-lived schism before the Khan bitch slapped them in line. Basically, the Khan was more or less the last Primarch to choose a side. He had been kept in the dark about the heresy, and what he was learning was very fragmented and untrustworthy. He was a smart, pragmatic man, and would not declare for either side until he knew who the bigger asshole was. While investigating Prospero to try find Magnus, as well as evidence as to who was the bad guys, the warrior lodges of the White Scars staged a coup, and attempted to take control of the fleet. The idea was that by the time the Khan returned to his ship, the entire legion would be under the command of Horus, with a Death Guard escort to reinforce it. That way, the Khan would be like, okay, well, fuck, I don't have a choice, and then side with Horus. The White Scar coup was led by a number of notable characters. Hasek Noyan Khan, one of the highest ranking White Scars in the Legion, as well as one of the OG White Scars who fought alongside the Khan before the coming of the Emperor. Torgan Khan, a Terran born White Scar who originally wanted to be a Lunar Wolf, hence held Horus in very high regard, and Hibu Khan, another Terran born White Scar. Funnily enough, the coup mostly involved Terran White Scars, which contrasts with every other Legion whose loyalty Loyalist elements were mostly Terran born. However, the coup wasn't a Chaos Uprising, neither was it particularly malicious. They believed that the Emperor had betrayed the War Master, so it was up to them to ensure the Khan ended up on the right side of the war. They seized control of the flagship, however, a brave Jagorian Khan led his warriors on board and engaged the conspirators in battle, keeping them from total control of the Legion until the Great Khan returned. Jagadai was enraged that his warriors attempted to make the choice for him. In that fit of rage, he killed Hasek Noyan Khan as the rest of the traitorous White Scars realized their mistake and surrendered willingly. Some White Scars took their own lives in shame, whilst a couple others fled from the Legion to join up with the traitors and swear themselves to Horus. Torgan Khan would regret his actions and happily join up with the White Scar suicide kamikaze squads, atoning for his mistakes, whilst Hibo would do something similar. Hasek just kind of bled out on the floor. You could argue that this was the worst case of traitors in a loyalist Legion, but to be fair, they were just very misguided and the taint of chaos was pretty much nowhere to be 
insane. The next more egregious example of traitors within Loyalist Legions was Luther, Astalin, and the Fallen within the Dark Angel Legion. This one did include a lot more Chaos corruption, but was once again mostly a big misunderstanding. See, the Fallen aren't and never were one unified faction. They were just a bunch of salty Dark Angels left on Caliban. Some were completely loyal to the Lion, others loyal to the Emperor, but not the Lion. Some were loyal to Caliban, and yes, others were loyal to Chaos. Luther had been corrupted by Chaos, Astalan was just extremely salty at the Lion, and Zahariel also drank the Chaos Kool-Aid. However, others like Zabriel were just kind of hanging out. When the Lion returned to Caliban, all the Fallen were united when Astalan fired upon the Lion's fleet, kicking off a civil war. The Fallen didn't really know what was happening. They thought the Lion had attacked first and was now massacring them, so they fought back. They were all then dragged into the warp and scattered throughout time and space. When the Fallen would meet up with each other, they would either stick together or upon realizing that they were actually opposed to each other, for example, one being loyal to the Emperor and the other is loyal to Chaos, they would then part ways. The Chaos portion of the Fallen was actually the minority, hence most Fallen weren't even aware that there was corruption on Caliban. With the Lion's return, most of the Fallen are rallying to him and getting redeemed, with only a few Chaos corrupted ones being unwelcome. Overall, a pretty forgivable affair since it was once again a misunderstanding. The Raven Guard were pretty steadfast loyalists during the Heresy, especially since most of them were brutally massacred on Isvan. You don't really want to join the team that just betrayed you and slaughtered your brothers. However, there are two notable instances of Raven Guard joining the traitor forces. In both instances, they were brainwashed and tortured, but hey, still counts. The first was Alastor Rochelle, who survived the dropsite massacre but was then captured by the Night Lords. Uh-oh. He was horrifically tortured and had his tongue removed, which resulted in him becoming unshakably loyal to the Night Lord Sevatar. We don't really see the switch from betrayed tortured prisoner to Night Lord Simp, but he ends up being one of Sevatar's closest and most trusted allies. Other Night Lords also grow to like the Raven, as he is nicknamed, but I doubt it's because of his singing voice or witty jokes. After all, the bloke literally can't speak. I'm not sure what happened to him, but I assume he is either dead or went off to become a founding member of the Space Sharks. The other notable traitor Raven Guard is Nathian, another survivor of this fun. He was a beast of a warrior, killing dozens of wordbearers with Bolter and Blade as Corvus fought Lorgar. However, his will was broken when he saw that Corvus beat Lorgar, but then ran away from Conrad Curse. Nathian was then wounded and buried in the corpses of his fallen enemies. Lorgar went on to find Nathian alive, and then as a bit of a passion project, was able to convince him of the traitor's cause and corrupt him over to chaos. Nathian went insane during the conversion process, but genuinely did believe in the traitor's cause. He ended up acting as a guardian for some of Fabius Bile's experiments, before eventually being found by Corvus. He gave Corvus a final monologue about why he went traitor, before then blowing himself up in an attempt to take his Primarch with him. So I wouldn't exactly say that the Raven Guard traitors saw the merits of Chaos, more so that they were broken, either by torturous knives of the Night Lords, or getting cum blasted in the face by Lorgar, resulting in fanatical, broken warriors. Ultramarines generally aren't ones to fall to Chaos, but it can and has happened. But even when it does, it's very rare and one of the times it did happen, the corrupted Ultramarine broke free of his corruption and suicide bombed Chaos. However, Ancarion was one of the rare examples. He was a chaplain, so you would think this boy would be pretty safe from the clutches of Chaos, but no. During the Kalth Underground Wars, where Gilliman had taken the bulk of the Legion to chase Lorgar, while various warriors from both sides remained in the underground areas of Kalth to finish each other off. It was here Ancarion would meet his doom. He led the defense of one of the Arcologies, but was overwhelmed and then corrupted by Nurgul, likely by getting infected with Nurgleite plagues and then being offered freedom from pain if he embraced Nurgle. He was then fused with a Nurgleite demon and began desecrating the corpses of his fallen ultramarine brothers. He actually became quite problematic, spreading plagues throughout the underground wars. It was only when an elite squad of ultramarines engaged him, with their captain blowing him up with a melter bomb jihadist style, that he was finally stopped. The word bearers get huge hard-ons for corrupting pure people, hence the effort they went through to get the chaplain corrupted. This next one is a bit shrouded in mystery since GW loves pulling that shit, but let's just cut through the nonsense. During the Horus Heresy, at least one great company of Space Wolves joined the traitor's side. The details surrounding their fall isn't entirely known, but it seems as if they were separated from the Legion and were then either manipulated or just slowly corrupted to chaos. This great company, turned Chaos Warband, is still present in the current setting, taking the name of the Dark Wolves with a similar symbol to that of the Space Wolves. They operate near Fenris with the original Space Wolf chapter going out of their way to fight them where they can. Further evidence to support that they are Space Wolf traitors from the Heresy is their abundance of Heresy-era weapons, vehicles, armor, and technology. They are led by a warlord called Skyra, but it's not clear if this was the original Wolf Lord of the company. Overall, a pretty big L for the Space Wolves.
rules, since a great company can have up to 10,000 space rules in it, making it the largest group of Chaos Corrupted Loyalists, even larger than the Chaotic Fallen elements. The Iron Hands have their share of rumored traitors, with warriors wearing both Sons of Horus and Iron Hand livery being seen fighting Loyalists, but that was just a passing bit of lore and could have been a bunch of cosplaying traitors. As for why the Blood Angels, Salamanders, and Imperial Fists seem to be the only loyal legions that never had traitors, Sanguinius didn't have traitors since his entire legion was with him on Cygnus Prime, hence they were all baptized in fire against chaos. There weren't enough living salamanders left for any of them to go traitor. Also, salamanders are too nice. Most Imperial Fists were stationed on Terra or in other organized strongholds, and knew of the Warmaster's betrayal, hence couldn't get manipulated. Imperial Fists are also known for their stability and resistance to the warp. Overall though, the other Loyalist Legions shouldn't beat themselves up. Most of the time, the ones that went traitor were either tortured into insanity, forcibly corrupted, or manipulated. It was very rare for a Loyalist to be like, you know what, fuck my Primarch, fuck my Legion, and fuck the Emperor. If you enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be, where we've just uploaded some actually quite law friendly, not suitable for work artwork of Commissar Kane. Literally scenes that happen in the lore. Hit the subscribe button, then hit the real subscribe button for more traitorous content. Join the Discord for more memes, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.